the very first one. Um, and this is a set of uh, six images um, which we'll be using to create a software simulation. And the second gadget that I'd like you to grab um, is the half circle progress bar. And you'll find that on the second page up here uh, in the featured um, gadgets. Again, that's the half circle progress gauge and images for the webinar. Um, I'm also joined here today in the room by a, a number of people from our quality services team and, and um, they'll be answering uh, questions to the questions pane. Uh, in addition, I've got a second voice with me today. Um, <laughs> can't you say hello? Hello. <laughs> um, and, and I'm joined by my dad, uh, Michael Allen, and um, designer of Zebra's apps. And um, as we're going through the interaction, I'm going to be leaning on him for advice on um, how we set up a, a project for individualizations for uh, each of the students. Um, and also some ideas and simplifications that we can do as we're building along in Zebra. So you'll hear two voices today. And, and they're not just in your head. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to see a counselor. <laughs> well, maybe. I guess we should really. <laughs> so I've got a, a project here started. And I'm going to kind of pull, pull this up um, full screen so we can all see it. I may actually need to zoom out just a little bit. Um, and this has our roadmap for today. And I will publish this project um, at the end of our webinar today. And like the last few that we've been doing, I'm happy to share the editable version of this project, not just the, um, the finished application so that you can page through it. But um, I'll share with my wiring um, and the content that I've created so that, that you can go through it yourself um, and make changes, which is a also a nice way to, to learn. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump in our jump into our roadmap here. Um, so this is kind of an outline for the project as I'd like to set it up. Um, the first thing that would happen when our application starts is that the student is immediately thrown into a challenge. They're not given any help. We might give them a text scenario, um, maybe some audio to prompt them about the functions and the steps that the student needs to do. Um, but we're not giving them everything. We're essentially putting them into a real life situation and say, go ahead and do the steps. Um, and if you're able to do the steps, why then we know that the student has some knowledge about um, this particular topic. And we probably don't need to force feed them um, all of the information that goes into it that a subject matter expert might feel like is necessary to go over even before testing yet. So throw them right into the fire. If they're successful, why we can push them on to some more advanced stuff. This would this would be a this is voice two. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a, a a design that that I like a lot. I, I recognize that many instructional designers would would raise an eyebrow right away. Uh, but uh, of course uh, Zebra allows you to implement any design that you favor and think is appropriate. But uh, I do want to say that I, I think this is very frequently the right thing to do. In, in many applications, I think all, all of us expect to settle down and look at eight pages of reading material before anything ever happens. Uh, and it means that we kind of turn off our thinking uh, and just kind of uh, start to cook post and our attention and our involvement slides uh, as we go through pages and pages of information that maybe I'm going to get to use in some way. Most likely I'm just going to end up with a post test. Uh, so um, while again Zebra has no particular bias and you could do anything that you like, I'm particularly happy that Christopher is using this kind of a design today because it's no harder to do this than, than any other design. Uh, and, and so the choice should be what's appropriate, not what's hard and easy from an author point of view. Right. Um, and this roadmap also gets us a chance to cover some very basic features of Zebra's Apps Professional, um, learning to navigate between event flow, um, and gives you a, a, a rough idea of uh, an easy way to work inside each individual event, how much content um, may be appropriate to put in each one before moving forward. So after jumping into the challenge, 
assuming that they've they've made a couple of wrong selections, haven't gotten it perfect, um, and this number really is up to you. Um, we then present our student with a, a choice, um, and that choice is several different ways to go back through the interaction and to get help. The choice might be, I want all of these things, um, or in, in the case that we're going to do today, I, I want to choose a, a style of help as I'm going through the interaction again um, that maybe best suits my needs uh, for discovery. So choices could be, I want some sort of text hint on the screen, um, a hot and cold meter, and that's what we're going to be building today. Um, maybe have step-by-step -step guidance that says this is step number one with a little bit of explanation of why it's important to do this step, two and three and four and so on. Or maybe just a visual demo where we've got some sort of movie or um, stop animation uh, that actually shows the cursor going through each one of the, the appropriate steps. After completing or going through this, you know, at the student's pace, they get to choose. They might go back through a couple of different styles before they move on. Then we're going to have some sort of assessment. Again, this is uh, almost identical to the challenge at the beginning. You can think about maybe uh, changing the scenario a little bit. Um, so maybe it's not exactly the same challenge, but covers all the same steps. Um, uh, and if they get a couple of uh, wrong selections, again, why send them back for remediation and give them, um, make them go through one of these choices, maybe the one that you think is the most optimal. Then when they're ready, they can come back to assessment again, uh, and assuming that they pass, they would move on to a new challenge or maybe even add an extra level of sophistication to the interaction. Um, so that's our roadmap for the project. Um, and so just as we're, we're thinking about building today, we're going to build a challenge. We're going to provide some, some help to the student after that challenge. And then we're going to move on to uh, an assessment. So uh, I'll demonstrate the challenge to you. And um, I've not put any scenario text on this yet. Um, text, I think, for this demonstration is a, a a tedious task. <laughs> so let's just get right into the clicking. Um, so in our system preferences on the Mac, there is a location where you can start to add in all of your social media accounts. And once you've done that, there's some pretty neat ways that you can share files on uh, files and photos on Facebook, and you can instantly send tweets directly from a file on your desktop, which makes sharing pretty cool. Um, and so the challenge here for our student is to go into their system preferences and find the place where they make that choice and, and put in some, some information. So let's start by getting a couple of these right and then we'll get a couple wrong. So you look actually under mail contacts and calendars, which is why I think this is a pretty good challenge because you'd think it would say something like social media sharing. Um, but under mail contacts and calendars, here's a whole bunch of different choices of a, accounts and social media um, that you can add directly to your Mac so that you can share. Um, so you might look under iCloud or all of these different things. This challenge is to set up Twitter. So if I start clicking in the wrong area, it's going to say that I'm, I'm getting a couple strikes here. We'd move into adding username and password and that sort of stuff. We've got our username selected. Um, and just a couple of clicks, we add password and that sort of stuff. But if I start getting things wrong or clicking in errant areas, it's going to add more strikes. And um, that would then send me into uh, the, the choice here for our students, which is which, what type of help do you want uh, in learning this particular interaction. So we've got uh, the ability to give you a, a visual demo, maybe put in some text hints, uh, or something of a hot and cold meter that says when you're getting in the right region, um, give me some visual feedback uh, to let me know that I'm close. And our hot and cold meter is, is really set up pretty simply. That is, we've got certain areas on the screen which have um, hot spots associated to them. Of course, when the student would be going through this, these hot spots would be uh, cloaked. Um, but the idea here is that we want to narrow the total number of choices, maybe down to three, essentially turning this into a, a multiple choice question. Anything extra you'd like to? Well, no, it just, uh, it, it just uh, helps learners focus on the choices that are really relevant, I think, without, without giving the answer away. So it, it, at least they have to do some 
to some discrimination among likely candidates. And as you'll see today, as we start putting together this hot and cold meter, you know, once you've got essentially the very first screen set up, your template is really easy to, uh, to fill out. Essentially, we're going to be going over object replacement. Um, so things that we're going to cover, I'll just recap a little bit. Um, we're going to be doing um, a little bit of work on navigation um, so that when you're in uh, an event flow, you've got some branching for your students so that they can move uh, essentially between multiple different choices, move back and forth between uh, assessment. So we'll be looking at navigation and setting up different events in event flow. We're also going to be spending some time with uh, setting up arenas, and we'll be putting all of our graphics in those. Um, and then we're going to be working uh, most directly with uh, cloaked objects um, for our hot and cold meter and click areas. Um, Good. So that's that's our roadmap for today. Okay. And you, you can see a very similar lesson if you were using a PC environment the, as opposed to a Mac environment, right? Right, and, and really the Mac environment that was chosen here today was just simply for some content. Right. Um, uh, something that actually I didn't know. I did a little bit of research for fun things that you can do with your Mac, and um, this was one of them. What other things might you use this technique for? What other content? Sure. Um, so. I, I originally got this idea from some of the work that Allen Interactions does with um, uh, software simulation, uh, uh, especially for uh, proprietary software, um, specialized internal systems, uh, onboarding for uh, new employees, uh, even remediation for employees that are there, making sure that they're getting through their workflows um, and whatever their proprietary software is um, as best as possible. Um, so that's the inspiration, and I, I was simply looking for something that was generic that we could all use. If you think really generically about it, it could be used for a broad range of things. Like um, if you were had a lesson on uh, workplace safety, and you had a, a, a picture of an environment in which there were some hazards, you could use the same technique almost exactly. Yes, you'd, you'd overlay areas that you'd say uh, to the learner that you wanted them to identify a hazard that needed to be addressed. And as the cursor gets closer to the area, your little meter would come, go up, but it wouldn't tell them exactly what thing to click on, right? And so I guess we're using the meter in part because it's just fun. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's just more interesting to see something happen on the screen in response to what you're doing. And uh, I think that just um, pulls in a little more involvement. Yeah. Okay. Some, something out of the ordinary, for sure. Um, again, as we're going along, I do invite you to ask any questions that you might have through the questions pane in, in GoToMeeting. Um, we're happy to, to offer any, um, any support. And uh, as well, the team here will let me know if there's something that uh, needs to be addressed for the entire audience. Um, so let's make sure that you're logged into uh, Zebra's apps. I'm going to um, leave this page and go back out to zebrasapps.com. We're going to be creating a new project. Um, and again, there are two gadgets that are, are worth having um, for this particular uh, webinar today. One of them is the half circle progress gauge. Uh, and you'll find that on the second page up here under featured. And, um, also, the images for webinar, which is the very first gadget that's that's listed today. Make sure that you add those to your account. Um, and you need to go to the gadget shop. Which right, is, We're different than the app shop. So yeah. here's the app shop. That load in here for a second. There we go. And the gadget shop. And you know that you're in the gadget shop because when it's selected, the the button is black. It's black. Okay, and th those gadgets might not be showing feature depending on where your scroll sorry. right and uh, that half progress um, gauge is on the um, the second page right here in the middle or if you type a keyword down below it would come up to sure I even think if you just start typing circle just type circle and hit enter hmm. there it goes 
There's a there's a couple of them, but here's this one down. There. So I want the bottom. one that's titled Half Circle Progress. Half gauge. Circle Progress Gauge. Okay. And now we get that by doing what? Well, on the details page, or right here, since I actually already have it, it's said that it's in my collection, but there would be a button here that says free, uh -huh. uh, and clicking on that button would put it into your account. Oh, okay, so you click free. Yep. Right. Okay. Uh, and if you end up in the detail page, that button is, again, right here where it says in collection. Uh, there would be a free button and that would put it into your account. Um, so let's go ahead by uh, starting with uh, creating a, a brand new project. Uh, once you're in your account, of course, you do that from the, the My Stuff tab. Right down here, it's this green button that says Create New Project. Now, if we didn't get these gadgets now, we can still get them from the editor, right? Yep, and there is a, there's a, a little cloud icon, and I'll show that inside the yeah. editor. Yeah, so if people haven't gotten them at this point, they shouldn't panic, right? But we yep. just kind of give up on that and go to uh, Create a New Project. Create a New Project. Okay. And we're going to give ours a... A title here today. Um, let's choose um, software tasks, and you can title yours whatever you'd like. Um, the graphics that have been chosen for this are tall, um, so you probably want a project that's at least 700 pixels in height. So I'm going to go ahead and, and change it to be 700 tall and 1,000 wide. Okay, so I've made the change. It's now 1,000 wide by 700 tall. We want us to be a professional. Uh, yep, for okay, sure. A pro, not a creator. Got to make sure that this is a, a pro project in order to use event. And those buttons are right under the title there. Right here. Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and say create new project. That's a button clicked way down the bottom right. Yep. Uh, I can't tell when you're clicking because I don't hear a click. So you should. I'll try to say click when you click. Maybe. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> that really helps. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make my uh, editor here just a little bit bigger um, so we can take advantage of the full screen. Um, and again, as we were saying before, you can get your gadgets once you're inside the editor. Um, to do so, you'd click on the cloud icon up here right above the pointer. And you get a cloud? You get a cloud and it's going to go out there and it's going to search and give you information about all the different gadgets that are available. It will default here to just your gadgets. Um, and this is taking a while because I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got a ton. Um, hmm. If you haven't gotten the gadget uh, uh, formation from the gadget shops, clicking here moves you out to the gadget shop and you can do the same searches to, to find them. And so that's what they would do. They would click right. uh, Gadget Shop. Yep. Okay, so the first one that I certainly do want on my project is this Half Circle Progress Bar, and I just happened to see that one right away. So I'm going to um, go ahead and double click to go into the very first event and click and drag to drop that gadget in. And it'll take a second to load my hot and cold gadget. Um, and the second one that I was looking for were, was my uh, webinar, I think just images. That one I know for sure is in the category of uh, graphics. So you can make that refinement, now it's going to jump down. So under the, under the category of uh, graphics, we should be finding this images for webinar gadget. I'm going to click and drag and drop that one in. Fantastic. Okay, so I've got those in. This gadget is... Um, How are people doing with that? Do, they, do you think they're getting those gadgets? Any, any feedback to say that that's going slow? Okay. Okay. So let's um, zoom out just a little bit so I can see my entire project. Okay, so the images gadget that you dropped in is really just a big arena with six different images on it. And you're paging through them using the, con the arena controller. Using the, the arena, using the arena controller at the top. Um, once you've dropped a gadget into your project, one of the neat things that happens is you also get the images 
they they populate your uh, resource library. Um, so you can see that I've got uh, a bunch of pings here that are labeled two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, the representation of the full gadget, which is images for a webinar. Another one, this is hot, the hot and cold meter. Uh, and what's pretty neat is when you click on each one of these rows inside your um, resource library, it actually highlights the object on the screen if it's in use. Um, we're actually going to delete these right away, and that also gives me a chance to show you that uh, the resource library counts the number of times that each one of these objects is in use. So if I was just to go ahead and click on the images for uh, the webinar gadget, go ahead and say delete, all of these now turn to zeros. So all the representations for the ping images, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they're now all zero. The gadget itself is no longer on the stage, it's zero. Uh, and what remains is the hot and cold gadget uh, and its um, little shell here, which was also a ping. And of course, when you bring on any object from your asset library, now that I've got them all deleted, if I click and drag and just drop this right in the center, now this image, which was the very first one, says that there's just one of these in use. Uh -huh. So nice. really, really handy. So the arena is just a way of delivering a package of images in this case. Correct. And that's all you really wanted. Yep. You didn't want the arena. Nope. Oh. Okay. Although we're going to rebuild it. <laughs> it's come back. Okay. It's going to come back. Um, so let's start with um, our challenge. Uh, the very first thing, which was our simulation that had a series of screens, making the correct choice, page just forward, gave us new information to choose from. And we're actually going to start with the very first image uh, that was on the screen here, this guide me uh, uh, PNG file, number two. And so let's just go ahead and bring that onto the stage in event number one, and we can even just place it kind of right here in the middle, and that would be fine. Very fine. The next step is to create an area to click on. So we want to make, um, when the user's pointer comes over mail, contacts, and calendars, when they click right in this area, just like they would on their own machine, um, that it would page to the next screen. Um, so we're going to draw a rectangle. And so we're going to go over to the tool palette here in Zebra. Go ahead and select the rectangle tool. You know, of course, that it's selected because uh, it's got a green outline. If you had double clicked it, it would be solid green. Clicking off it with the pointer and then back on would get it to single green. And now, what pray tell does solid green mean? Solid green locks the tool. So every time you click and drag with this double clicked and solid green, I'm going to continue to get rectangles. Uh, so it's a speed up thing. It's a speed up thing for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you go back to the pointer, now I can go back and delete some of these. In most cases, you just want one. So clicking on it once gets this little outline, and, then, and the outline refers to you're going to make one rectangle, and then it's going to default back to the pointer. And you're drawing a rectangle, but almost any object can be used as a hotspot, right? Sure, you could use the polygon tool. You could even use the path tool with a with a fill yeah. um, to outline something very exactly that might be a Shape. I see, sure. So let's just go ahead and use the rectangle and click and drag to completely cover uh, mail contacts and calendars. Okay. With that done, I'm going to uh, also name my rectangle here uh, Hotspot. And then I want to make a few changes. Um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to add some uh, transparency to this rectangle so that I'm sure that I'm over the right area. Um, our user is never actually going to see the hotspot. It's going to be uh, set to cloak on run true. If you go up here with the rectangle selected, over into the inspector, and you may not have gotten the inspector right away. If you, if you don't see this bar, it's, it's the little eye icon that'll pop out. At the top it has the name of the message center that's selected and then all of these changes are just a, a quick way of making changes about this particular object. 
Yeah, we have two ways to do it, right? This is sometimes more convenient than using the message center and vice versa. Right. But it does the same thing. Does the exact same thing. So let's set our hotspot to cloak on run true. We'll do that under visibility. Click the T for true. And I also want to drop the opacity, and this really is for edit only mode, just to make sure that I can see through it. And I'm going to drop it down to about 50% here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've got a nice little faint image, and this lets me know this is the whole area which the user could click on, and then we're going to have some sort of action. So with these two objects on the screen, what I'd like to do is I'd like to put both of these inside an arena. And I'm going to use the arena object like a flipbook. And so this is going to move me from step to step to step to step. So probably the easiest way to make sure that you've got everything um, is just to go ahead and go edit and select all. That grabs your rectangle and the image. And then I'm going to go up to the arrange menu and say make arena. That put the rectangle and the image inside the arena. So now if I go ahead and add, click and drag or add the edge here of um, move the arena, I'm going to move everything with it. What would happen if I dragged the graphic instead? Sure, if you had clicked and dragged and moved the graphic, Ooh, you're okay. going to move it inside the arena and you get to immediately see that the arena has a very cool clipping feature, um, which allows you to um, hide a few few things that are, or edges, that are um, of objects that are inside this arena. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and click the, the Z key on my keyboard to undo, and that's going to bring it right back to, to center where it was when you originally made an arena. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, with this step done, what I'd like to do is uh, show you a little bit about object replacement and how you can uh, add pages to an arena. And we're going to focus in on the top of our arena here. I'm just going to zoom in so we can see this a little bit better, uh, of the arena controller. In the upper right of our arena controller, which is this little black um, rectangle. <laughs> On the left hand side, this is uh, our controls to page through the arena. So if we had more than one page, um, this would bring us back to the first page. Um, again, if you can think of yourself as being inside a book, this allows you to flip um, between pages. The one one is actually telling me I have, I'm on page one, and like, there is only one. Right. Like one of one. I should read I, that. Correct. Okay. We're on page one, and our arena has a total number of one pages. If you were to click the, um, and don't do this now, if you, were, <laughs> if you were to click the plus button over here on the far right, um, and in fact when you get the rollover, you get all the information that you need here, um, clicking the plus button is going to add a new page. If you hold down the shift key while doing it, it's going to insert a page before the page that you're currently on. So there would be a blank page if you were holding down the shift key and hit plus that would now take the place of page one in two pages of your arena, two total pages. If you were to hold down the alt key, it's going to take everything that's currently in this arena and duplicate it. So you're going to have two identical pages with the same objects uh, and all the same properties. So if I was just to click the plus button, I'd get a blank page too. And of course, I can delete that at any time. And if I was to hold down the Alt key, which is what I would like you to do, is to hold down the Alt key and hit the plus button on the Arena Controller. Now I have two identical pages. And using the arrows here on the left-hand side of the Arena Controller, I can flip between page 1 and page 2. Identical objects in the identical position. So the only thing that should change when you uh, move your arrow keys here at the top uh, is this number should change from a 1 and a 2. Okay. So let's make sure that we're on page 2 of 2, where everything here is identical, to page 1. 
And I'm going to show you a little bit about object replacement. This is probably one of our um, most used, most enjoyed features inside Zebra, where you can replace any object that's on the screen with uh, an image or gadget um, or any object that's inside your asset library. And this is how you do it, and I'll do it a couple of times so that we've got some practice. We're going to click and drag from uh, O3 guideme.png, which is the next step in our arena here. Click and drag. That gives you a, a ghost of this image, so you should see the same thing that was in the uh, resource library. When you bring that over objects now on the stage, you get what we call a construction tape. And it lingers just for a moment, and then it fades. And what the construction tape says when you're uh, hovering over it like this, with an image from your asset library, is that if you were to let go at this moment, we're going to replace the object that is currently highlighted by the construction tape with the new image from the resource library. And I want to replace um, this main image here that's behind it. So with the construction tape up, and here I'm going to go off for a second, go back on with the construction tape up, I'm going to go ahead and let go. should bring up a prompt. And it says, it gives you the options here. You can replace all of the images that are like uh, the one that we're trying to replace with this new image, or just replace this one that we're currently over. So we're going to change, before we had two of the guideme.pngs, and we can see that here at the top, because it's the very first one says that there's two of them, and everything else is a zero. We're going to replace the image of uh, 02 guideme.png on page 2 with the one that's right below it. And we just want to replace the one on page 2. So we're going to choose replace this object only. And click that button. And now when we use the arena controller to page back, forward, and back, you can see that we're flipping between two different pages of our arena but a rectangle remains in the exact same place. Now, if this had been a mistake and you wanted to go back, you can do that as many times as you'd like. So on page two, I can say maybe I want the first one back again. And I can continue to do this over and over. So uh, in your project, I'd like you to set it up like this, so that on page two, at the, and you may need to do a little bit of rearranging of the graphic you just replaced. I'd like you to have on page one the systems preferences panel that shows all the different icons here and on page two the mail calendar uh, and contacts and calendar page here that has all these different choices over on the on the right so these first two images on page one and two and you want that image on page two slid up to the top edge is that what you did yeah I, I moved it up I think it makes a nicer effect okay there's no aesthetics. That's it. No big, oh, no big issue. Nope. Yeah. Okay. So we set up that little hot spot, but we haven't done anything with it. Right. And now it's time to wire it up. Oh, okay. So let's go back to uh, page one here on your arena. And you may need to use the arena controller to return. I'd like you to go ahead and click on the hot spot. And we're going to look under outs inside the um, message center. And outs refer to things that students, users do to this particular object, the things that they do to it. Um, and they're set up in categories, point and click, drag and drop, and collision. And if you were to click on any one of these categories, you get to see a whole bunch of behaviors that the students do listed. So a full click. When their mouse button is down, that's click down. Click release is when their mouse button comes back up. Pointer over, just hovering over the object. Pointer out when it's no longer over the object. What we'd like to have happen, just like simulating the software, when they were to choose this selection, uh, mail, contacts, and calendars, click on this icon, we want to go to that page. Okay. Right? Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to say when we click on it, I'm going to click and drag right here on the message center right over the point to create a wire. And I'm going to go down to the arena's message center under in. Which should pop up. Should right? pop up, sure. So you may need to kind of wiggle the wire 
right over the edge just a little bit to make sure that that message center pops right up. Go over the ends of the arena's message center to the category of do, and we would just want to go to next page and release. So it says when you click on the hotspot, we're going to go to the next page of the arena. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go ahead and um, we might as well run our project. Um, so let's go all the way up here to the top of the editor to run restart. And let's just make sure that you're on page one of two and that you actually wired up the hotspot on page one. An important step there. This is, I think, the first wiring we've done today, right? Yep, so that's correct. Anyone has questions about that, we should be sure to ask. But you, you get that wire just by dragging off the little port, right? The little dot that's on the edge. Yep, and you want to click, you don't want to click in the middle of the ribbon. You want to click right over here on the edge where there's this little dot. Click and drag, and that creates a wire. Okay. And if you, if you didn't get that, why just let it go is okay. So click and drag from click on the hotspot down to the arena's message center, and you want to attach that under the ins, under do, go to next page. If people got wires that they didn't want, how would they get rid of them? Sure. Um, being over the arena, that makes it a little tricky, mm -hmm. um, but here's, here's the best way to do it. If you made an uh, inappropriate connection, or not the connection that you wanted, I should say, um, you can go ahead and click when your when your mouse button when your <laughs> when your pointer is over the wire, you'll notice that the wire gets a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. It says that you're about to select this one, okay. And if I was to click down and hold my mouse button down, it's going to disengage the wire from the end that your pointer was closest to. Okay. So in this case, it deselected the arena's message center. Right. If you decided that you didn't want a wire at all because we're over the arena, I would recommend bringing, holding that mouse button down, bringing it over this white area, and letting go. And that's just going to delete the wire altogether. Um, a common action which is really helpful with arenas is if you were to say, uh, let go of a wire over the top of an arena. So here I'll make a, I'll do, do this step. By, click and drag to create a wire, and I just have it kind of hovering over an arena, and I let go. Sometimes it will make a connection in the ends to actually go to this page of the arena, and we don't want that. So if we just click and drag, get our wire, bring it over to the arena, under we'll do, go over to in. under in, yeah. under do, go to the next page, to the next page. and let go. And now it sort of documents itself, right? Because I'm just looking at it, and I can see that a click on hotspot makes the arena go to its next page. Correct. That's really nice, I think. <laughs> In the upper left-hand corner now of your editor, let's go ahead and hit Run Restart. It's going to simply just hide all the message centers for us. So uh, you should have noticed that your hotspot disappeared. It's still there since we said cloak on Run which means I can still interact with it as a student. I just can't see it. So if I was to click anywhere on the screen that my hotspot was not, nothing should happen. And if I click directly on Mail, Contacts, and Calendars, it should move to the next page. Ooh. That's good. All right. So let's go ahead and hit. If, if people were actually on the second page when they did run, it wouldn't have worked properly, right? That's correct because they wouldn't know to flip back to page one to start. So they need to make sure to set their arena to page one before they run. run. Before they run. And the way you ran it was by clicking on that little play icon way up in the left corner there, right? Correct. Or, as we know, you can just press the letter R. Right? Of those of us in the know, yes. <laughs> well, now everybody's in the that's know. Cr that's correct. Okay, <laughs> so let's go back to that. Edit reset. Okay. So we want to duplicate this combination. Um, and we started to do that before with uh, object replacement. Now we've done a little bit of wiring. Uh, and we would have to, uh, if we'd like, to rewire this hotspot because the hotspot that's on page two didn't get that same treatment. Now we could go back to page one 
and copy this just by clicking on the hotspot, pressing the C key, you'll pop up here, it says copying one object. We could go to page two and deleting this hotspot and pressing the V key to paste the object. Now none of these are with command, right? They're right. Just the, just the simple letter. key. It's just the simple key. And you'll find that in, you can do the same thing by going um, to the edit menu. Oh, sure. So I could have clicked on this hotspot, again on page one, the one that we wired up to go to the next page, go up to edit, choose copy, and I get that same message. Go forward, here I can delete the one that's already there, go to the edit menu, and go paste. And you'll immediately see that the hotspot drops in, it might be appended with copy number one, and uh, it's wired up to the arena to go to the next page. So really all that we're going to do now going forward is rearrange the hotspot. Over our choice here, we want to set up our Twitter account. And then go back up to the arena controller, hit the Alt key, hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, and press plus. It duplicates the page, it duplicates all the objects inside of it. And now our step is to go back over here and choose the next image down. And I realized that these are poorly labeled. This should be number one, and this should be number two, and this should be number three. So we're a page off. Um, guide me, uh, page number four goes on page number three. <laughs> <laughs> so of let's, course it does. Yep. Of course it does. So let's click and drag to grab that uh, image, and we'll bring it right over the top here. And on page three, we're just going to go ahead and replace it. Right. right? Make sure we got that construction tape up and say replace this object only. Now, of course, if you make a mistake, just hit the Z key on your keyboard to undo. Uh, or you can do that by going up to um, the edit menu and, and choosing the first selection, which is undo. And it, it nicely tells you what it is going to undo. Okay, so now that we're on page three, just click and drag to move that hotspot. And I want this over the username. I'll maybe make that real nice and small. Again, I'm going to go up and I'm going to hit Alt Plus. That duplicates everything on the page. Go back to the asset library, and now I'm just going to replace this image. We're going to do this a couple of more times. I'm going to move my hotspot now down over the password section. Go Alt Plus. Go ahead and grab the next graphic, replace just this one, move the hotspot. We want this to go right over the button that says sign in, and Alt plus one more time, and we'll grab the last image, get that construction tape to appear, and let go, say replace this object only. And then on the last page, of course, why we can delete our hotspot. Now, what you showed us is that you could do this. You just did, I think, one wire all together. Yep. Once. Yep. And everything else has been copy, paste, and replace. Right. So it was really fast. Yep. I have no doubt that everybody got lost somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But it was really fast. <laughs> I mean, that was that was great. Um, I, I I wonder if people would like to see it again or if they were okay with it. Maybe we can get a little feedback from folks as to whether they need to see it again. Or sure. It takes, it just so that, you know, it takes me about a minute to do all of it. To do all of it. So if, you, <laughs> if you'd like me, we spent a lot of time explaining a one minute step. <laughs> um, why don't I just go ahead and, and redo all of it. Um, let me hide this here for a second. It's this very capability that we think makes it just a lot faster than any other tool out there. You just, we just don't see this possibility anywhere else. Correct. So let's go ahead. I'm going to, don't do this. If you've, if you've got it working the way you want, you don't have to do anything. I'm going to demo the whole, whole set here in just a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and hit delete. Oh, really from scratch? From really from scratch. So bring on our first image. So it would be best to people would just sit and watch this now, not try to do anything. Correct. Okay. I'm going to get my hotspot. I'm going to set that to cloak on run. 
I'm also going to bring down. Work and run is important. The opacity is not. Right? That's correct. Because you're just doing that to make sure you've got your hotspot positioned correct. the way you want it to. But if you can tell that without making it transparent, it's fine. You're going to make this longer than a minute. <laughs> Okay, so from my hotspot, I'm going to you could keep going while I'm talking. Sure, <laughs> hotspot. Um, from the hotspot, of course, we go to pointer over and to click, wire that to the arena, in, to go to the next page. With everything. That's our one wire. That's our one wire. Now I hit Alt plus, and I grab the next graphic, and I replace it, and I change its position. And I do that again. And again. Move the hot spot. All plus to create a new page. And again. Replace the graphic on the new page with a new graphic. Move the hotspot. And one more time. Alt plus for another page, duplicate. Replace that graphic with this one. Yep. Boom. And, and on that last one, that hotspot, this doesn't matter. I can go ahead and delete it. Okay. So then you're going back to the first page and you're ready to run it. Correct. And you're clicking there. Now you're clicking Twitter. Now you're clicking the entry, now you're clicking the password, now you're clicking the sign in. Done. You're done. So just that simple setup of that was, putting that was really less than that. Putting everything inside an arena and using your hotspot to just simply page you forward. Um, you really can do a lot with this short little structure. Um, from doing a lot of authoring in in uh, Zebras apps. Uh, I know that you're demonstrating one really important lesson, and I might point out what that lesson is. Please. <laughs> <laughs> that lesson is get one interaction in a sequence like this exactly the way you want it before you duplicate it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Because then you can just go bam, 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 bam. That's correct. But if you decide after you've built six of these that you want something different on each one of them, now you've got to go tweak each one. That's correct. Right? Yep. And often the best thing to do when you realize that is to just delete the other ones, go back to your first one, make a correction, and then do this duplication like you just did. Correct. Again. Yep. I think there's a hesitancy for us to do that because we think, well, I've got all that built up. It looks really good. I don't want to do it again. Right? But it's the fastest way to do it in Zebra, actually. Yep. So, like, if you're, I don't know if you're planning on it, but if you were planning on introducing the little meter and if your cursor is getting close to it. Yes. We, we actually don't want all those duplicates of this. That's correct. Right? We, we're going to get rid of those. Yep. And we're going to perfect this first one. Yep. And then duplicate again like you've just done. Correct. Okay. Um, and, and so there were, the, the two next steps really are um, starting to use a, a couple of buttons to page within Eventflow. Oh. Um, and to set up the hot and cold meter, and to also, within our first challenge, uh, provide essentially some strikes that says if I get step, any of the steps wrong any number of times, and we can set the number of times, the tolerance for that. Um, if I, say, have two strikes, the next time I click a, a wrong selection, I'm going to send you to remediation and give, right. you, give you some help. That sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Do we need to pause for questions, do you think? Maybe sure. We're okay. Looking at our team here just to see if this. No? Okay. People are doing okay, huh? There's the internet. <laughs> All right. Good. Okay. So, um, counting the number of times the user does something that they're not supposed to. Um, I'd like to use a slider for that. I think it makes it uh, really easy. Uh, to author and as, uh, as well as you can use the slider to pro provide some some feedback uh, with a, in, in combination with the text object. So let's go ahead and go back to our toolbox and I'm going to go ahead and select the slider 
It's kind of in the middle there, halfway down. A little more than halfway down. Yep, looks like a, looks like a watch. Exactly. And I'm going to click and drag to create a slider. And I did that from top to bottom. I'll do that one more time. So choose the slider, click and drag. And the wider you make it, the bigger the knob gets, right? Correct. Oops. Uh -huh. And this is simply going to be our, our counter for the number of times the student chooses something other than the right answer. And um, let's go ahead and set that up. So essentially what I'm saying is if they click anywhere other than on the hotspot, um, I want to record that. And um, let's give them a total number of, uh, I suppose, three wrong answers or three, three wrong selections. And so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this whole image, now the guideme.png, from its outs and under point and click. Right, just clicked on that graphic, right, to get that message center. Correct. So and I then you just dragged the message center up to the center. Moved it all around. Yeah. Okay, so with uh, on page one, their very first graphic selected. And it, again, I know that I've got its message center because it does tell me what it is at the very top. I'm going to go from click, I'm going to click and drag, and I'm going to bring this all the way over to the slider this time. And under the sliders ins, and under the sliders do, I want to connect this click to nudge up, which is going to increase the value of the slider by one. So click and drag to connect those two. And of course the slider, if you're unfamiliar with it, um, it's a range of values, and of course you get, as an author, get to set what that range is. So if I was to move the knob up and down, you can see this, the current value of the slider keeps changing. It's just a numeric value here that I'm changing. And what we're saying is whenever they click on the wrong answer, why we're going to nudge the value of the slider up by one. And um, I really only want them to have a, a couple of wrong turns before we do something. So I'm going to change the end value of my slider to be 3. And, and there's two places we can do that. And again, we can do that over in the inspector with the slider selected. We can go over here to values. And I'm going to change its end value to be 3. So it goes from 0 to 3. After having done that, if you were to go back over to the knob now, when you move it up, you'll see that it just kind of jumps into position. So it goes from 0 to 1 two, and to three. So go ahead and take a second and make this connection between click to nudge up on the slider and change the slider's end value to three. For those who think a little bit like a programmer, slider is really variable. Right, uh, it just has a, a visual representation to it uh, that allows direct manipulation, if you want. But it's got those nice features, like I can set the maximum value it can ever have. So it can never, this one can never be more than three and never less than zero. Correct. Right. And uh, and you set you've got units of one, so it isn't going to have fractional values either. Right, it's nudge amount which is shown here in the inspector as well. It says yeah. it's only ever going to nudge up by um, one. So it's going to go one, two, two, three. And all those same properties are listed in the message center exactly. You're just using again the inspector because it's just sitting there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Didn't have to be open. But there you've got it open. You can see if you change it one place it changes uh, the other two. So it's good. So now it says two. Yeah, it says two both places. Yep. Nope. Back to three. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, as you were just alluding to, I'd really like this functionality now on every page of my arena. I didn't get to see this work. But can we run this and see this? That just this one thing? Just yeah. Go, okay. And see that slider. Bump sure. Up. Yep. Um, so let's go ahead and hit run. It's just rewarding to see your work work. <laughs> sure. So if I was to start choosing places that are wrong. Each time you click on that, it goes up one. Each time the slider moves up one. And now that it's at a maximum of three, why it can't go any farther. 
And that's what you're intending to have happen. You're really not intending to have anybody work the slider directly. No, in fact, I'm going to hide the you're slider. Hide you're just using it as a variable. Yep. Yep. So I'll go back to uh, edit reset. That'll put my slider all the way back down to zero. Um, and essentially what I'd like to now have is I'd like to have my hotspot move me forward in the arena. Oh, I, I, magician there, I just meant uh, edit reset you did by doing what? Clicking the edit reset button in the <laughs> upper left hand corner of the editor. Yeah. Right? That's the button just to the left of the pen, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. And that says put everything back to the way it's going to be when this program runs. Correct. Initially, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, with that selected now, I'd like to make this connection of a uh, click from anywhere on, on the inside the arena that isn't the hot spot to move my slider up one. Uh, now I could go to page two, go ahead and choose the image on the next page, go to outs, go to click, make another wire and hit nudge up. Or I could go to the end, the very end of my arena and delete a few pages and then go back to going to Alt Plus, going to um, the resource library, and replacing the objects, and again, making these selections. So it's up to you whether or not you'd like to wire each image uh, and do um, wire this whole main image, anything that's not the hotspot, to move your slider, or to just go ahead and delete the pages and, and do Alt Plus as, as you go forward. Okay, so I have a design question then. Um, you're you're using just one slider for all pages. That's that right? correct. Okay, so that means uh, if they hit whatever, you, however many you set, two or three, three uh, uh, wrong places anywhere on any page, yep. it's going to trigger something. We don't know what you're going to do with it yet, but we know you're going to trigger something on that happening. Correct. Right. Okay. You could. If Decide you want a maximum number of false hits on, and in that case, what you do is you would copy the slider uh, uh, along with the page. In fact, the, the easy thing to do would be to simply slide the slider into the arena itself, and then when you duplicated pages, it would duplicate the, the uh, slider with it. Correct. So you could do it either way. You're going one slider, all pages, two or three wrong hits maximum. Right. They could all be on one page. They could all be on different pages. Yep. Okay. So take, go ahead and take a second, and you may have chosen to wire from each of the graphics on each page of the arena or to um, delete pages in your arena and, again, duplicate going forward by hitting Alt Plus on the arena to create a new page, duplicating everything in it, and then replacing the graphic and changing the hotspot. So go, go ahead. and We'll give you about um, another two minutes here to get that set up. Um, and then I'll show you the next step is what happens when they hit three wrong answers. Now we have elevator music. Or are you going to sing for us? Neither. Neither. <laughs> if I shuffle a deck of cards, will everybody hear that? Oh, they will. Never mind. That was kind of a big step. I would think we probably lost some folks there. If you, if you guys are seeing a similar question coming in from multiple people, you should let us know so that we can zero in, but not, not huh?
it's quiet. We've got a really good, well, or just a quiet group of people. I think we, I think we have really smart people in the webinar <laughs> This is so easy. All right. Well, it looks like um, we've we've uh, passed our our two minute time here, uh, and let's move on to the next step, which is to to say what happens if you you max out on our number of tries here. So from the slider, what I'd like to have happen is if they do reach the maximum of three, I want us to send them someplace else, actually to, to a new interaction altogether. So let's go ahead and click on the slider and let's look at its outs. Again, you can do that by clicking the outs arrow here on the right of the message center. Brings up a bunch of categories down at the bottom. And I want to draw your attention to the category here at the bottom called triggers. And there are two. One of them is hit end value, and the other is hit start value. And that, of course, refers to uh, these two ends that we uh, manipulated earlier. We changed our end value to three. So essentially what it says is when the slider knob, whether it's moved by a user or it's moved because it's been nudged up by this wiring, um, clicking on the graphics. Once it reaches the very end, here at the very top, we want it to do something. And so I'm going to go ahead and create a wire from hit end value. I click and drag. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that wire all the way to the top over here to the Projects Message Center and under its ends and do and I want to go to the next event and release. You could say go to a specific event, but as long as your events are organized, next event's just an easy way to do it, right? Correct. There's a little liability, though, because if you move your events around. Sure. It, yeah. Okay. Sure. Yep. There are several other choices that we could have made. Um, under ends, we could go to a specific event, which is this first one. Go to the first event, to the next event, previous event, last event. Um, so let's just go to the next event. And you may have noticed that Zebra created uh, an extra wire for you. One of them was hit end value is actually wired to the edge of our event into this pegboard. Uh, and that essentially says that when this action happens, when the knob gets to the very top of the slider, we're going to communicate outside of this first event. And in this particular case, what we want to do is we want to navigate between events. So we're going to go to the next one. Um, so it automatically created this wire to the edge, and it made a little custom wire under the outs of our event message center, which says when it, the slider hits the end, go to the next event. I think that can be confusing. Um, uh, and the, the reason that happens, though, is because you're actually wiring to the outside world, right? We're leaving this event and we're talking to the delivery platform at large, or we could be talking to another event. When we go out to event flow, we can then jiggle that wiring around when we go outside. Right. So that's why it wires off to that, that pegboard, if you will, to that edge, uh, because now we can, we can work with that wiring. Um, it, when you wired that slider to the edge, the message center for that event now uh, uh, takes on, uh, shows a custom uh, ribbon in there, right? And it yep. says slider hit end. Um, and here, even in event flow view, you can see that that custom wire is, again, wired to the project's message center to go to the next event. Right. Um, I might label my first event here the challenge. Uh, just by clicking in its message center and, and changing it from event one to challenge. And then I'd like to add um, a new event. So let's make sure that you're in event, event flow view. You may have been down here at the wiring view for the first event. Uh, if you go ahead and click the icon in the very upper left hand corner, this brings you out to event flow. And then once you're in flow view, I'd like you to press the plus button on the title bar for the very first event over here on the right. And when your icon hovers over it, just like the plus button on the arena, this is going to add a new event this time right after uh, this first event. 
Um, and Alt Plus also works here too, just like it does in the arena. So you can copy everything in this particular event um, and add it going forward. In this case, I'd just like you to hit the plus button and let's make a, a blank event altogether. So now in event flow view, the only thing that we've created so far is an interaction here, our first challenge on the first event. We should have a blank master page and now a blank event directly after it. Let's go ahead and um, double click our first event here, or second event, sorry. And on event number two, this is where the user would get to choose what style of help that they would get. And I'm going to zoom out just so that we can see everything just a little bit better. There we go. And to do that, I'm going to create a series of buttons. So let's go ahead and from our tool palette, go ahead and select the plus or the push button which is this object right here on the toolbox. Go ahead and click it. And let's just start creating our menu. So I'll put on our first button. I'm just going to go ahead and double click it and say um, text hints. I'm going to go ahead with that object selected. Uh, hold down the Alt key, click and drag to create a second button of the exact same shape and style. And we'll relabel this one hot and cold. And I'm going to do the same thing one more time. Click off, hold down the Alt key, click and drag to create another button. And we'll just say demo. So in our in our flow, I'm going to pull up the end of the project just for a second here to show our workflow a little bit. Well, that's loading up. Um, this, is, this is the point where the user has gone through, they've been challenged a little bit. Run it. So we've built the challenge, right? There's no, there's no help here on this page. They get a couple of wrong selections, and now we're going to move them into this second phase where they get a chance to choose the type of help that they'd like. And essentially what we've done is we've created an event with a menu that has a couple of these choices on it. So from here, inside of our current project, what I'd like to have happen, and we can show this now in event flow view too, is I'm going to create a series of events after event number two that have different styles of help associated with them. So I might have three or more. So they go through the challenge, which is on event number one. They get a, they hit their maximum wrong um, wrong shots. and they get a choice of what type So event number three will become text hints. Event number four. Event four, this is going to be hot and cold. And event number five, this will just be demo. Now I use the slider here in event flow view to do something that's pretty neat, which is by grabbing the bottom part of the bar, and the bottom, bottom half here, I'm able to show any two events side by side. Um, so I left my um, event number two, which has our different choices on here, text hints, hot and cold, and demo. And then I grabbed at the bottom of the slider then to show each one of those different events on the right. And 
I just went ahead and relabeled them. So you should see now at the, in the title bar that event number three is text hints, event number four is hot and cold, and event number five is the demo. I'm going to go ahead and double click back into event number two and I'm going to wire up each one of these buttons now to go directly to one of those events. So let's start with text hints. I'm go ahead and select this first button, get its message center, and um, you'll notice that with push buttons, button pressed, which is an out under triggers, is just automatically showing. And you don't even have to look under the categories. It's just a, a common use of a button is to say when the button is pressed, I want something to happen. Um, so that's just there for you by default. I'm going to click and drag on button pressed on the very first one, click and drag to create that wire, go up to the project's message center, go under ins, and this time under do, go event, and let go. Again, it's going to wire that button to the edge, and then its message center is also going to get a wire. In the project message center now, when I go to this setter ribbon for a go event, you notice that there is a blank um, black field right here. And when I click on it, I get a drop down menu of all the different events um, as they're labeled in event flow view, which is why we went through that step of labeling each one of our message centers. So, of course, clicking the text hint button, why that ought to go to our text hint event. And I'm going to repeat that step two more times. So the hot and cold button, click to create a wire, holding down my mouse button right over that hot and cold buttons message center, bringing that wire all the way up to the project message center. And you notice another new Go event, a blank brand new Go event has been created. And when I bring the wire over that one, I'm going to let go here at the top. And of course, this one is going to go to the hot and cold meter. So I'm going to click in its drop down menu, hot and cold. And one last time, I'm going to click on demo, button pressed, click and drag to create that wire up to the project's message center, to the ends, and one more setter ribbon here to go event and change this one to demo. I see we've got just about 12 minutes left, um, and in the final 12 minutes we're going to go over uh, at least starting to create the hot and cold meter interaction, and, and really we ought to be able to do that in about five minutes because it's all the same steps that we've so far done before. So let's go back out to, um, back out to event flow and grab our slider down here at the bottom, and we're going to work on the hot and cold meter uh, event. Let's go ahead and double click into the middle of this event. That's the way to open it, huh? Correct. There's also a, a pencil at the top, right? And sure. It's the same thing. Yep. Just clicking the pencil icon, of course, it gives you the uh, rollover to let you know exactly what it's going to do. Edit this event, and you're brought into um, the hot and cold meter event. Okay. So let's kind of review our steps. The first thing that I, that I want to bring onto the screen, just so I get the positioning right, is the hot and cold gadget that we brought in at the very beginning of today's webinar. I haven't used it yet. It's down here at the bottom. Let's click and drag to bring it onto the screen and let go. And it's message center, you may find it just kind of over here off to the side. Now there's lots of stuff inside this, um, inside this gadget, um, and in fact there is also a tutorial under our support section on how to build a progress bar just like this. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to learn how to build this gadget from scratch using all Zebra objects, that's out there for you, and of course you can customize it and change all the graphics and, and make it however you'd like. Um, so it was built inside Zebra, right? It was built inside Zebra, just using Zebra capabilities, but now it's a nice little package thing. Yep, and it's one. It's now treated like one object. It was a big group of objects. Now it's just one object, and it's got one message center, and it's very easy to wire to. Yeah. So. Um, also onto the screen, of course, we're going to duplicate what we did with that um, hotspot. 
before clicking to go inside an arena. So we need our very first screen. We're going to go ahead and drop that on the stage. So before we get started, let's go ahead and start um, sketching out how the um, hot and cold meter is going to interact um, with this image. The first thing is I want to just say that when my cursor is over the whole system preferences pane right here, that we're at least part of the way there. Um, this is a progress meter that's going to display just like a slider 0 to 100 um, by default. And so what I might say is that when my pointer is over this object, so we go ahead and click on our image here of the system preferences, grab the message center, go to its outs, under point and click now, instead of clicking on it, just when my pointer is over it, I want to do something with this hot and cold meter, which is I want to just move it up a little bit. So I'm going to click and drag from pointer over, this time not click, pointer over, click and drag to create a wire. I'm going to bring that over to the gadget, to the hot and cold meter, and I'm going to go down to its properties, and this time under custom. And there should be three display colors. You might see all of them as white. And um, display percentage. So I'd like you to think of display percentage as how, uh, on a scale of cold to hot, 0 to 100, how, how hot are they getting? <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just release over, um, pointer over to display percentage. And that creates a set of ribbon. So really what I'm saying is when my pointer is over the system preferences, I want to change this meter to be some percentage. And in this case, I want it to be, I don't know, say 25%. And when I'm no longer over this pane, so I'm just over in the white space, we're going to return it back down to zero. So I'm going to click and drag from pointer out this time. Go over to custom to, to display percentage and let go. So that's kind of our first step. Let's go ahead and see how this works. Now can we run just this this, this event? Yes, we can. And I am really zoomed in here. I want to zoom out here to 75% um, just so that we can see at the very top in each event you have an event title bar. And of course, it shows you what master pages have been applied, and that's a conversation for a different day. But it also allows you to page between events over here on the right, just like in the arena controller. It also allows you to just play this event um, from this point going forward. Um, so let's go ahead and just hit this play button. It's very different than the one over here. This one says, I'm going to start from this event, no matter where I am in event flow, and start running. OK. So now when I roll over my system preferences image, you should see that your uh, gadget has jumped up to 25%. And when I roll out, it goes all the way down to zero. So I'm part of the way there, and now I'm down back to zero. Fantastic. OK, let's go back to um, edit reset. And let's make one more little tiny change with this, which is I'd like to have a little bit of animation. I just don't want it to jump up and down. Um, so I'm going to go to its transition seconds. And maybe one second's too much. Let's say 0.5, so just a half second. And I'm going to zoom in so that you can see that, of course. So in, under ins, under set property, for each one of these that I've created, so for each display percentage center ribbon, I'm going to click to open it up and just add 0.5 uh, transition seconds. And now when I zoom all the way back out here, and just um, it's also showing that I'm currently at 12. I want that to be all the way down to zero. Make that change under properties. And let's just go ahead and run this event one more time. And now we'll get to see the animation. So when I roll over system preferences, you see that gadget jump up to 25%. And when I roll back off, it goes all the way back down to zero. So let's go back to edit reset mode. And let's create 
uh, two more regions. One's going to be our in the warm area. One's going to be our in the hot area. Um, and then we'll uh, just kind of wrap this um, uh, today's webinar up. So I'm going to go back to the tool palette here and choose a rectangle. And I suppose, let's just say the warm area is maybe about this much of our system preferences area. And of course I'm going to label my rectangle warm so that I know when my pointer is over this we're going to change our progress meter here to about halfway up. And it needs some settings. We're going to say this is cloak on run. And of course I like to have opacity so I can see or transparency so that I can see the object behind it. So let's turn that down to 50%. And now just from out under point and click, from pointer over, click and drag to create a wire. I bring that again over my gadget down to custom under properties. So properties, custom, and the display percentage and release. That's going to create a new set of ribbon. So again, this is our third. We want to set it now to about 50% complete and give it a transition seconds of about 0.5. So then again, that's going to animate that meter from wherever it currently rests all the way up to about 50% and it's going to do it in a half of a second. One more time, click to create a rectangle. I would say we should choose about three or four choices, icons up there. Again, go cloak on run, drop our opacity down to 50% or so. We might want to change its color just so that we can see the difference between these two. We'll label our message center hot. And from the out on this new rectangle under point and click, click and drag to create a wire on pointer over, bring that all the way over to the gadget, to custom, and to display percentage, and release, and let's say 85. And again, at about a half second transition time. Let's go ahead and uh, run. I almost pressed the wrong run button. We want to run from just this event. So I'm going to go to the event title bar here at the very top and choose the run button over on the right. So I should go from zero to 25, to 50, and then when I'm over these four choices, we should be in the green at 85%. Let's go ahead and hit Edit Reset one more time. So the next step, of course, this progress meter is going to carry forward, so I want this outside of the arena. And I'm going to click and drag to select the image and the two hot areas that I created, my warm area and my hot area. And I'm going to go back up to the Arrange menu and say Make Arena. Just for, uh, just for something different, maybe this time I'll choose an oval. This will be the click area for the icon. Label it hotspot. Turn it to cloak on run. Of course, you've done these steps before already. From its outs under click, this is going to page us forward. So click and drag to create that wire off our new little hotspot. Bring that down to the arena's message center and then under ins and do. Go to the next page. And so now all the steps are steps that you've done before. We simply go to the arena's uh, controller at the very top. We go Alt Plus, grab the new image. This is the next step. Replace just this one. Rearrange our hotspots. You can change their size and location. Maybe something like this. Go Alt Plus. I'll just do this one more time. You can fill out the rest. 
go over here, click and drag, grab a new image, replace this one, we'll move our hot and cold meter spots around a little bit, and then we'll just say our little click area why it's this space here. And if we wanted to see how it all came together, could go back to, oh, of course, yeah, let's move this guy right over here. If we wanted to go back to the very beginning, the very first page of our arena, and go ahead and hit run, we're going to see that my hot and cold areas are active. If I go ahead and click on the appropriate one, it's going to move me forward and the hot and cold areas continue to work going forward on all of the consecutive choices. So can you quick run from the very beginning because you set up those buttons, right? And sure. Triggered from your slider and stuff. I don't think we saw all that work. Sure. So let's run from the very beginning. Again, you'd want to hide your slider off screen. Let's just go ahead and say that we don't know what we're doing here. No clue. <laughs> right? All right, now we're prompted with how would you like to um, be guided through and, and learn the appropriate steps why we choose the hot and cold set. And now we're dumped right into this interaction with, again, more help on, on how to progress through each one of these screens. Beautiful. Beautiful. And from our event flow, event flow view, and, and maybe if I can pull up our, our roadmap here just a little bit, um, the next step an author would take is to go back and build in a few more different choices, maybe some sort of visual demo or um, text hints, essentially the same way that we built um, our hot and cold meter, and then follow that up with, at any point, they can say, go ahead and test me again. And again, that would be a button, just like um, those choices that we had on that second, that second arena page. Well, I see we've reached the end of our uh, webinar time for today. Um, I'm going to stay on for... Uh, answering questions if you have any more. Um, and as always, if you'd like to have a, a copy of this project or anything that I built today, I'm happy to share that with you. Um, you can send me an email and, and through the chat window here I'll um, go ahead and share my email address. Uh, it's also the same email address that you got the uh, invite for uh, today's webinar from. So you could certainly just reply to that. Um, and I would be happy to send you a copy, an editable copy of um, everything that we built here today. Um, and if you have any additional questions uh, by after the webinar, I'm also happy to, um, to answer those offline and whenever it's convenient for you. So, any questions? At this time, I don't see that there are any questions, but please feel free to to ask them through the questions pane. We'll hang out here for just a few more minutes. <laughs>